Reciprocals are a bit different to just adding and subtraction because reciprocals are about division, okay? But nonetheless, the whole point of this kind of approach to things is that we can do things by calculus. We are going to do this by calculus, by the way, in a second. We can do things by calculus. We can do things with all the old methods. But if you can think about something visually, you understand it in a much deeper, um, more functional way. So, before we get cracking on this, right, you can see uh, this is the actual function I'm interested in. So, just as a component, I've, I've graphed the denominator. Okay, I'm going to use that as my um, visual argument. Before we get into that, let's just think about what happens. If you know something about a number, you actually know a lot about its reciprocal. For example, if you have a function, right, and at some point that function is equal to zero, what's the reciprocal of zero? Infinity. Well, undefined. it's undefined, right? It's undefined. Now, um, that means that on this graph, I don't exist, which means in visual terms, undefined means you get a vertical asymptote. Okay? So anywhere that our actual function is zero, the reciprocal of that function will have a vertical asymptote because it can't exist there, right? That's what vertical asymptotes are. In the same way, just think about if the function is huge, like some astronomically large number, right? Then when you take the reciprocal of a really astronomically large number, the reciprocal should be really small, right? It'll be small, but it'll still be positive, right? If you think about a really, really negative number, like negative a million or something like that, when you take the reciprocal, it's still going to be small, but the sign, it comes for the ride, yeah? Like 1 over negative a million is a negative small number, right? Does that make sense? Now, this is all you need. This is all you need, and we can get a really, really good picture of this. Okay, so have a look. Y equals x cubed minus 1 is my green graph, right? You can see it has an intercept. Think about it. What's the intercept? It's the zero. It's going to be uh, x equals 1 and y equals 0, okay? So here, I've got x equals 0 for the y, for the y intercept, which is negative 1, because I've just been moved down 1. And then this guy's been moved across, okay? So at x equals negative 1, the function is 0. So it's reciprocal, we'll have a vertical asymptote. So get your ruler out. There you go, vertical asymptote. Okay. Now, let's think about what's happening on the right-hand side of this graph, right? x cubed minus 1, it's just skyrocketing, okay? It's just growing and there's no limit on how much it's going to grow. It's going to grow faster and faster and faster and faster. In other words, it's going to do this, right? It's going to become a huge positive number. So therefore, its reciprocal would become a really little positive number. Okay. So this is climbing off to infinity. So its reciprocal is going to climb. Well, it's going to hug the x asymptote. Sorry, the x axis. It's going to become asymptotic to y equals zero. Okay. So I'm going to draw over here. This is what's happening over here on the right. Okay. This function is growing the reciprocal is going to shrink real, real fast. Okay. Second last piece, over here on the left, I can make a similar argument. Right? When you look at the extremities, you often get the same kind of behavior, or the same kind of behavior, but opposite. Right? So this is a huge negative number, yes? So its reciprocal will be a small negative number. Right? Number, reciprocal. So again, um, oh, that's a really bad asymptote. Doesn't matter because it's in the middle anyway. Um, Again, I've got this y equals zero happening, but I'm going to be approaching from beneath. Right? It's going to come under here because it needs to be negative still. Okay? All right, so far so good. I've got a couple of asymptotes there. Now, what's the rest of it doing? Okay? Well, let's think about, again, just like we did with addition and subtraction ordinates, think about easy points. Are there any easy points that we can know about? <coughs> x equals zero. Are you sick of x equals zero being an easy point? Okay? I'm not because it's helpful, right? This point here, this intercept is y equals negative 1, right? What's the reciprocal of negative 1? Also, negative 1. It's its own reciprocal, yes? Okay. So I know that, right? Now, I already know I'm going to be climbing towards this asymptote, right? So I'm expecting like that kind of behavior. Yes, I'm coming close, right? Over here, I'm expecting the same kind of thing, but from the top, okay? Now let's have a look closer into this vertical asymptote. What's going on, right? x cubed minus 1, we knew it was getting big this way. What's it doing going the other direction? Small. It's getting small. It's getting super small. In fact, it's going to even get to zero, right? Now, if your denominator is getting small, right, what's the fraction going to do? 
get really It's going to get huge. That's what reciprocals do. Like they reciprocate. They're doing the opposite thing. Okay. So this guy is going to skyrocket up like that. Okay. I could actually find out what that value is, but it's not that important to me right now. It's skyrocketing off. Okay. This guy is doing exactly the same thing, but negative. You see that, right? It's approaching zero, but it's approaching from beneath. Okay. So therefore, I'm getting this kind of behavior. It's dropping like a rock. The last piece is, well, what's happening in between here? How do I connect here to here? Okay. Now, would it be that bad a conclusion to draw to say, I'm going to go across, I'm just going to cut straight through. Okay. However, I want you to take a moment to think about this guy for a second, because this is no random point. right? Um, think back to this, and think back to your geometrical applications of calculus. right? What kind of point is that point? It's special. It's, it's a stationary point, and it's a point of inflection, right? Which makes it a horizontal point of inflection, okay? So right here, if I were to draw a tangent, it would be horizontal. Are you okay with that? And just for a moment, right? Think with me. Let me give you two examples over here. Don't need to draw this. Suppose I ask you to graph, just a very simple, bear with me, humor me. Ask you to graph, uh, well, I need another axis here, um, y equals negative 1. y equals negative 1. So there's y equals 0, the axis. If I asked you to do y equals negative 1, it would look like this. Now, what if I asked you to do the reciprocal function of this guy, of y equals negative 1? Human me, what would it be? y equals negative 1. It would be the same thing. I mean, we noticed that, right? For this one point, it's its own reciprocal, just like 1 is its own reciprocal. So therefore, the reciprocal function would very boringly look like this. Okay, now here's the thing, right? On the scale that we've got here, the whole graph x cubed minus 1 looks very, very curvy, doesn't it? Okay, but you guys told me this is a horizontal point of inflection. If I were to zoom in, like zoom in really, really far, okay, I can tell you what this graph is going to look like if I zoom in far enough. It's going to look like this. Do you see that? If I go in far enough, right there, it's just going to look horizontal. Right? That's the whole point of a horizontal point of inflection. Okay? If I zoom in really, really far, it's just going to look horizontal. So therefore, if the graph is horizontal, and that means it's reciprocal horizontal, then in here, if the denominator has a horizontal point of inflection, then it's reciprocal will also have a horizontal point of inflection. That's the last piece, right? I know I'm approaching the asymptote up here, and I've got to get to this stationary point, to this horizontal point of inflection. So I'm going to do something like that, okay? Like, how else can it get there? It can't climb down kind of like this, because you won't get a horizontal point of inflection there. Does that make sense? So that's why I've got to level out like so, okay? So that's why it changes concavity. But then over here, I've got to get to this asymptote, right? So now it bends, it curves downward, like so. That's a bit weird, but in fact, now we're just going to confirm this, right? Because we did this all visually. In fact, that should have been exactly what we expected, right? Because watch this. Here's the graph, right? Again, I'm going to make this easy for us by putting it in index form. Putting it in index form makes it trivial to find out what the derivative is, right? Come on, this is just chain rule, right? Help me out. What am I going to do? Do the outside first, so the power comes down at the front. What happens to the power? Decreases by one, and then it's chain rule, so I need to do the inside as well, right? So I've got 3x squared. Are you happy with that? That's a bit gross. Let's tidy that up. I'll put the denominator where it belongs, down here. Okay, now look. Don't do any computation. Just look at that bit, right? Um, Doris, you need to give Miss Yang... Oh, yes, 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 I know. Thanks. Have a look at it. Don't do any computation. Tell me what you know about this graph just by looking at that derivative. Has it got any stationary points? Yeah, no. <coughs> but yes. yes. Wow. It's got, it's got a stationary point, right? At x equals 0. Right there. Okay? But of course, it's decreasing all this way. It's never going to come back up. You can do the second derivative if you really want to test that out. Okay? But you don't even need to. Again, look at it. Don't do any computation. Right? Tell me. The denominator, right? What will the sign of the denominator be for all x? The sign must be positive. It's a square, right? So therefore, the derivative, the whole derivative, is going to be negative, right? Do you see that? Because it's a negative divided by a positive. So it's decreasing all this way, and it's decreasing all this way. 
right? Except for this point here, it's monotonically decreasing. Okay? So therefore, it's got to be dropping like a rock, but you already told me there's a point of inflection there. So if it's always decreasing, it can't possibly be a turning point. It's got to be a horizontal point of inflection. But you can see, I didn't need calculus to argue any of that, right? I just looked at this guy, right? And you thought I was just doing a straight line. I wasn't. I was doing that guy, just zoomed in really far. Okay?